So the first absolute thing you can do to improve your WordPress website's performance is to choose a great hosting provider. Because hosting providers cannot be improved, you can just have to choose the right one. Now, we have few recommendations of ourselves. We recommend Bluehost and SiteGround. They're excellent hosts that you can use to host websites of any size. You can start with the most basic plan, which is very affordable. And then if your website grows in traffic, then you can always upgrade to a higher tier plan, which will give you more resources to serve more visitors. If you already have a web WordPress website, you can also get migrations so that you can migrate your website from your existing hosting provider to SiteGround or Bluehost. More details will be in the description of this video. So if you want to improve your website's performance, make sure to choose a good host. The next thing I'd recommend you do is get the help of a professional if you don't understand technical concepts. Now, I've been there myself. When I first started using WordPress, there were no sophisticated tools and everything was either make some changes with code. So I've had my fair share of things that, that I've been trying on my WordPress website, which would break my website to improve performance. Thankfully, now things are much easier. But if you're not technically oriented, you have no idea how to make even simple changes to your WordPress website, then instead of trying to learn everything and risk breaking your website, it's much, much easier to just take the help of a professional. And thankfully, WP Beginner offers pro services to speed up your WordPress website. The service is extremely affordable and managed by experts, and they'll do everything to improve your website's performance, exactly what I mentioned in this video as well. So they'll help you with setting up your caching service, CDN setup, image compression, lazy loading, give you detailed reports of before and after performance, and basically implement every single thing that I'm gonna be mentioning in this video and more for a very affordable price. So if you think that anything in this video is too complicated for you to execute, then just go to WP Beginner's page that I'll link in the description of this video and also in the pinned comment and just hire WP Beginner to manage and speed up your WordPress website. Now, if you wanna implement everything that I'm gonna talk about, then let's get into the technical tips. The very first thing that you can implement on your WordPress website is install a caching plugin if you don't already have a caching plugin. Now, caching is a fascinating thing. So let me explain it in a simplest manner what caching is. Now, when a WordPress page is built, it takes data from the WordPress database, from different pages, different sections of your website, and then combines and creates a page together. Now, most of the time when visitors are visiting your website, the page content has not changed. So it doesn't make sense to create the page from scratch multiple times. So what caching does is create a copy of your page by combining all the elements before your website visitors hit your website, and then just use the copy to serve the visitors. So with caching, your server's precious resources are not used for every single visitor, only for more important tasks. So it's the easiest thing and the most highest leverage activity you can do to improve your website performance. Now to set up caching on your website, all you have to do is use a plugin. There are many premium plugins out there, for example, WP Rocket, but there are free plugins out there as well, for example, WP Supercache, which you can install and just configure in a few steps. By installing one of these plugins and configuring them on your website, you'll have caching set up in no time. And what you can also do is check if your hosting provider already provides caching solutions. For example, I mentioned Bluehost and SiteGround as our preferred hosting providers, and both of them have their own caching solution, which is built in. So you don't need to install or have any other external caching plugin. The hosting provider already is providing you with an excellent caching solution. So go check your host or check your existing website if a caching solution is already built in. Otherwise, use the plugins that I mentioned. And by the way, all the plugins I'm mentioning will be linked in the description of this video. So you can go check out all the links after you watch the video. So install a caching plugin and improve the performance of your website. The next thing you should be optimizing on your website is image sizes. This is one of the most common issues that almost every website has if you, when it comes to optimization, very large images. If you download images from stock websites, for example, a free website like Unsplash, Pixabay, they have images which are massive in resolution. And even if you click images from any modern smartphone, the amount of size or the overall uh, size of the image is massive. And by uploading that image directly to your WordPress website, you're basically guaranteeing that your website performance will be laggy and slow. So what you have to do is ensure that either before you upload the images, they are well optimized, which you can do by using some software or even just making a simple Google search about how to optimize your images before you upload them. So compress the images and reduce the resolution required on your website. And the second thing you can be doing is installing an image optimizer plugin like Optimal or other plugins that we have done videos about. I'll place some of those videos on the screen and also in the description of the video. So you can follow those tutorials and install those plugins and set up this basic settings. So anytime you upload new images to your site, they'll be automatically optimized without you having to do anything. So both of these solutions work, either optimize the images yourself before uploading them to your site or install a plugin that optimizes the images for you once you upload the images. Depending on how you want to configure this, both the solutions are perfect, but do make sure to have one of these solutions in place to optimize the images 
Otherwise, your website performance will suffer guaranteed. On to the next step. The next important tip I'll give you is to use the latest tech stack. Now, this ties into your hosting provider as well, because if you have a good hosting provider like Bluehost or SiteGround, they use the most latest tested, well-tested technology stack to host a WordPress website. Now, a tech stack consists of many things. You have the PHP version and all the other things that make up a WordPress website. But the highest performance impact a website can have is poor or low versions of PHP on your site. The recent version of PHP is more than 8.xx. That means some uh, variations of the 8 version of PHP. So if your website hosting provider is still using the 6 point something version, your website performance will suffer. So make sure that the tech stack or whatever hosting provider you're using has the latest version of PHP installed and they're optimizing the tech stack continuously so that your website performance is the best it can be based on the server that you're using. The next tip I have for you to improve your website performance is to update your WordPress and also plugins and themes that you're using on your site. Many website owners do not do this all the time or they just completely ignore, hey, WordPress requires an update, we'll do it later. Plugins require update, we'll do it later. But you're leaving performance on the table when you're doing this. So make sure that regularly log into your WordPress website and see if there are any updates available to WordPress to any of your themes and any of your plugins. Most plugins and themes and even WordPress has always has performance optimization built in with every single update. So once you update WordPress, your themes and plugins, you'll have performance benefits, maybe new features as well. And also you'll be protected against security threats because most uh, plugins and themes will also include uh, security updates whenever they're updated. So make sure to have plugins, themes and WordPress always updated to the latest versions. The next tip I have for you is to optimize and also keep an eye out on background tasks. Now, even if nothing is happening on your website, things are happening in the back end of your website, which you don't know about. Backups are being done, uh, scheduled posts are being scheduled, crawls are being done. A lot of activities keep happening on your website. And if the frequency and the amount of tasks happening or running in the back end is too high, then of course, the most of your server's resources will be spent there instead of actually serving visitors. So it's important to understand the more plugins you install that have background activities, the more your server resources will be spent doing those tasks. So minimize the number of background activities and optimize them for low traffic times. For example, if you have a scheduled backup with something like Duplicator, what you can do is make sure the schedule is set to when there's very low traffic on your website. So the server resources are actually available to perform the tasks. And those simple things can actually add up once you stack all those things in the backend. The performance of your website can definitely improve if you optimize your website for all these backend tasks. The next thing you should do is use excerpts on your home page and your archive pages, also called as category pages. By default, WordPress loads the entire content of the page on the home page and the archive pages. So if your home page offers or shows 10 blog posts, the entirety of those blog posts will be loaded on your page. That means all the images, all the content, all the comments, maybe some of the comments, they'll be loaded. That means the performance of your home page will start suffering and nobody's reading all the content anyways at the same time. So better than loading all the content, just use excerpts. That means short versions of the blog post so that users can decide for themselves what they want to click and consume the content. And the side benefit is that you will improve your website performance as well. Do the same thing for your homepage and also for your category and archive pages. And all these pages will have dramatically better performance on your website. The next thing you can do is split your comments into multiple pages. If you're getting lots of comments on websites, first of all, congratulations, your blog is very popular. But if you have a lot of comments, that also means a lot of comments have to be loaded every time the page loads. So instead of having all those comments on a single page, you can paginate them and divide them into parts, which will reduce the load time required to actually load the page, which is great, right? So you can do this right inside WordPress. All you have to do is go into the discussion settings of your WordPress website and enable the checkbox, which says, break comments into pages with X amount of top level com comments. You can configure the X I mentioned with five or 10 comments, however number of comments you want to load on the same time, but having or enabling the setting will dramatically reduce the load time and increase the performance of the website by a lot. So make sure to do this in the first place. The next thing you should be doing on your WordPress website is using a CDN. A CDN is a content delivery network and it's basically a network of servers available throughout the world, all of which have copies of the content of your website so that anytime a visitor is trying to access a website from a far end of the world, instead of having the entire request travel across the world to your server in your physical location, the server which is closest to the user can actually serve the user. 
So it's a great way to do two things. First of all, it reduces latency because even though it's electricity, it travels very fast. If you have to travel across the world, it does take time. So the server closest to your visitor can actually serve the visitor, which helps reduce the latency. And second, your server's resources are free to serve more visitors at the same time. So you're killing two birds with one stone by having low latency and freeing up your server resources to serve more visitors. It's a win-win. So make sure to use CDNs on your website. And in terms of recommendations, we recommend Sukuri, Bunny CDN, and also Cloudflare, which is completely free to use. The next thing you should never be doing on your website is uploading video directly to your site. Even though you might see, hey, the, the video is uploading and it's also processed, you might also be able to add it to a post or a page. And even if you go to the front end of your website, you might be able to actually play your video, but it's a really bad idea because most servers are not designed for excessive storage, excessive website streaming, and the amount of traffic required or the bandwidth required to send video. So most of the times, first of all, it won't work. And if, even if it works, your hosting provider might flag you down and shut down your website because their servers are not designed to host and stream video. So the easiest option is to use a video hosting service. You can use BunnyStream by BunnyCDN or upload your videos to YouTube or any other hosting service like Vimeo. So you can host the content there and not have excessive load on your WordPress website. Doing this will dramatically reduce the time. If you've been doing this, please delete all your videos and transfer them to a dedicated video hosting service. You'll thank me later. The next tip I have for you is to use a theme that is optimized for speed. Now I get it, if you go to the WordPress repository, you might find thousands of themes available. But if a theme looks great, it doesn't mean it will also perform great. So you have to ensure that you prioritize speed as part of the choosing process of whatever theme you want to use on your site. Now, thankfully, there are a lot of great themes that have great features, plus also have great performance. Our personal recommendation goes to StudioPress, Themeify, CSS Igniter, and Astra. We've been recommending Astra for a long time in many of our tutorials as well. You'll see that I'll be using Astra theme to demonstrate a lot of features. So choose any of these themes. These are very flexible, feature packed and great for performance. And you'll thank me when you use these themes. Now, similar to themes, you should be using optimized plugins on your website as well. Plugins also have a huge impact, if, especially if they're poorly coded. So if you don't have great plugins or if you want to use a lot of plugins, make sure that the plugins are optimized for speed. How do you do that? We've done a couple of videos about this, but make sure that the plugin is coming from a recommended developer, high ratings and no complaints about speed and performance issues. I'll give you a few recommendations for common plugins that you will need to have on your website. So if you want to have forms on your website, use WP Forms. For SEO, we recommend All-in-One SEO. For connecting Google Analytics, use Monster Insights. And there are many other plugins like Seedplot for page building and WP Code for adding code snippets and removing other plugins for your site. But there are a lot of recommendations. So make sure to check out the description of this video where I'll mention the most common plugins that you can use on your website for different purposes. These are all great plugins then they're optimized for performance and speed and great features as well. So by using these plugins, you'll eliminate all the bottlenecks that your website experiences and you'll have great performing website as well. The next tip is to split your long pages into smaller chunks or divide them into multiple pages. Now, if you imagine that if you have a really long blog post, it has a lot of content, a lot of images, a lot of them widgets, all of them have to be loaded at the same time, which means the load time of your page will go up. The easy solution to avoid this is to divide the long page into multiple smaller pages. It's very easy to do in WordPress. All you have to do is go to the block editor and add a page separator block here. And I've also done a dedicated video about the same topic. So I'll link that in the description of this video and you can go check it out after that. And you can combine this with lazy loading. Lazy loading is also a technique where all the important assets, for example, the images are not loaded unless the user actually reaches that point. It's also a great technique to implement on your WordPress website to reduce the load time for specifically images, any kind of widgets, anything that takes a lot of time to load on your site. So by implementing both these changes, you'll definitely have a reduction in load time, boost in performance and better customer satisfaction. The next important step is to reduce the number of external HTTP calls. Now, there's some HTTP calls that will be made from your website, but an excessive amount of these can definitely slow down your website. Examples of these are images that you're referencing from other websites, analytical services like Google Analytics or Facebook Analytics or Adobe Analytics and marketing pixels, conversion pixels, different kind of uh, other kind of assets you have in your site, for example, Google Fonts. All of these have to be loaded on every page of your website, which will increase the load time of your website. 
So the ideal thing is that to not avoid them altogether, but to optimize them and try to reduce it at whenever point possible. So if you're not using a service for, let's say, analytics, but you're just testing it out, make sure that it's not loading on every page of your website. Otherwise, the load time of your pages and your website will increase unnecessarily. The next tip is to reduce the number of database calls. Now, this is a very technical topic in itself. So I won't recommend you go into code and try to mess with things to reduce the number of database calls. But the easiest solution is to just use optimized themes and plugins. If you're using optimized themes and plugins, then these themes are coded well so that the excessive number of calls that I was referring to are not made in the first place. So even though there are things you can do on your WordPress website by creating a child theme and by changing things around, I wouldn't recommend it unless you understand exactly what you're doing. So the easiest answer is just have great teams and great plugins. And most of the times these issues will not happen. The next step is to optimize your WordPress database. Similar to how, how you have to clean up your house regularly and often to reduce the junk you have, you need to clean up your WordPress database often so that you don't have any excessive junk. Now, junk can be trash comments, deleted posts, excessive revisions, and a lot of transients and partial information that is captured by the database, which is basically not necessary, but your website stores it anyway. So what you can do is install a plugin like WP Optimize, which will take care of most of these things for you. Now, there are other plugins like this as well. For example, the WP Sweep plugin also does a great job. But the idea is to just find one plugin that works and just use it, I'd say, occasionally to clean up your website. I usually clean up my website once in every, uh, say, month or so, just to see if there are any things that I clean up. So by just doing these uh, scheduled operations, all the revisions, the trash comments and deleted posts, all they'll be cleaned up and your website performance will be great. The next tip is to disable hot linking of your content. Now, hot linking means that something that exists on your website, but other websites are trying to reference it or just loading it by spending resources from your website. It's a little hard to explain in technical terms, but think about this. Anybody else using your content, but your website server is actually using the resources to serve those requests. It's a lose-lose for you, but win-win for them. So to disable this, all you have to do is take this piece of code that I'll link here and also in the description and add it to your HT access file. We've probably done a video about this anywhere already. So I'll link that in the description as well, just next to the code snippet itself. So you can find that here and then use and implement that on your site. The next important step is to use a great security plugin. Now, this does have to do with performance because if your website is secure and a lot of attackers and random malware or I say malicious users are blocked in the first place, your website won't have to spend or your server won't have to spend excessive resources fighting those. And we recommend that you use a DNS levels uh, solution so that the website or the malicious users or the bad bots don't even reach your website in the first place. Our recommendations go to Cloudflare or Sukuri. Cloudflare is free to get started and Sukuri has affordable plans that you can use to protect your website from any kind of attackers, malicious uh, users, malware, bad bots, etc. And you'll thank me because your website will be protected and also the performance of your website will also be great. So those are all the amazing tips you should be using to improve your website performance. Make sure to implement all of those and give me a detailed comment about how your website performance improved. Once again, you're watching Yuvraj from WP Beginner. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. I'll catch you in the next video. Hopefully very, very soon. Take care.